Today I have with me Disney Happiest Day Game. It is ages 5 plus and it is 2 to 6 players. And as you can see, it is the official Walt Disney World 50th celebration. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at it. And as you can see on the front, you can see a few different favorite attractions we have, such as the Jungle Cruise, good old Big Thunder Mountain, Teacups, Tiki Room, and more. And one thing unique with this game is the fact that it does have a day cycle and a night cycle. So it does add just a little bit of complexity to make it fun for your family. So let's go ahead and open this up and set up the board game. Now assembly of this game is quite simple. For one, you're gonna have your base castle here, which is gonna go slide right into the slots. There's little holes underneath. You're gonna wanna go ahead and make sure it's locked in there, along with putting all these different colored balloons based on color into the slots and there's also two on the back as well additionally whatever starting characters you have are all going to start on the castle the castle counts as one space even though it is large it is one space then what you're going to want to do is each player is going to want to have four cards now typically you're going to want to play the game face down however if you're playing with little ones and you need some guidance as to where to help send them to you can play it face up if you'd like and then you're going to have the wheel on the side of the board, along with a stack of unchosen attraction cards also on the side of the board. One thing to keep in mind is when putting this game together, you want to start on the day side of the board. Additionally, Tinkerbell will go slide into the slot for the number of players. So for our example, we are doing two players. So Tinkerbell goes right in slot number two. Now starting to play this game is quite simple. The youngest player is going to be the one that will spin first. They go ahead and receive the wheel first to spin. And in order to win, your objective is to move all around the Magic Kingdom Park and find the attractions and characters and locations on your cards to score the stars at the bottom. And here's a hint, the background color of the spaces and where the cards are a match as well. So for instance, we have the Spitting Camel. If you look over in here in Adventureland, it is a green background matching with green. So keep that in mind if you have anyone who doesn't know quite where a character or attraction would be at. At the end of the game, whatever player scores the most stars is the winner. So on your turn, you are going to want to spin the spinner. If you spin balloons, you take one balloon token of each color you spun. So in this case, I spun red and blue. Let's take a red one and a blue one. Then you may spend any number of balloon tokens you have to move. Each balloon lets you move along one matching path to the next space. You don't have to spend all your balloons, and you may keep them for later turns. So for instance, let's say Mickey wants to go get to the Spitting Camel. So right now Mickey is here. In order to get to the Spitting Camel, he's going to have to do either an orange path or a purple path. However, right now Mickey does not have the right tokens, so he can't do that, so instead he'll want to focus elsewhere. So for instance, he also has Dale. Now Dale is right back here. So if he says, okay, this turn I'm going to use one blue, or one red, and we're going to go up here, because we have red, and then blue, so we're going to go up here. Now Mickey gets Dale, and he scores the point. Now if you spin this, which is the castle or the question, you can choose to do one of two things. The first one is you can move directly to Cinderella Castle, no matter where you are. Or you can do a second thing. You can answer the question on one of your cards and move directly to the space that matches that card. So for instance, let's say I want to do the Dale card to answer that question. What is your favorite snack at the park? So you get to answer that, say the little memory you had or one that you're hoping to have if you have yet to be at the parks. And then once you answer that, you get to move directly to that space. So it's a very quick lightning lane, if you will, to getting <laughs> to what you need. Now at the end of the turn, if you are on a park space, which is one of the character ones, such as the Dale example that we had, score all your cards that match that space, turning them face down and placing them in a scoring pile. So you're going to want to have your own different scoring pile off to the side, and you just have to remember that, because originally you are going to have all your cards face down. Now if you are in the train station space, let's go ahead and put Minnie there, draw a new card and place it face up in front of you, so you're going to have another character one. Then move the Tinkerbell card one slot up the castle. So Tinkerbell is going to move one up. Now, if you end your turn on the Cinderella castle space, draw cards until you have four face up in front of you. If you already have four, don't draw any. 
then move Tinkerbell up the castle space as well. Now if Tinkerbell reaches the top slot, which is right here, night falls in the Magic Kingdom Park. So when Tinkerbell reaches the top of the castle, you're going to want to set the Cinderella castle, including the entire base itself, and all the character figures aside. So they're just going to be moved off the board. And now that the board is flipped over, we are now in the nighttime phase, and you're going to want to move Tinkerbell back to the number of player slots that you initially began with. And then you're going to want to go ahead and put all the characters back at the Cinderella castle. Each player will again draw until they have four cards face up in front of them. Now mind you, even though the instructions say face up, I think they did mean to just say you have four cards because it did say at the beginning to do them face down. So regardless, let's just say that we have these four cards. These are now our four cards. Now one thing you'll notice is some of the characters did slightly move around. For instance, Genie is now here. Chip is here instead of Dale and there's some different changes all throughout. Just very minor, so it might slightly impact your strategy. Now, if it's night in the Magic Kingdom Park and reaches the top spot, that game is almost over. First, the player who moved Tinkerbell to the star takes the marker, which is worth one star. The marker is this. So whoever managed to get Tinkerbell to the end, they take this. As you can see, you get to use her one star she gets there. That adds to your total. Then each other player takes one last turn and the game ends. Now all players count up the stars on their cards and in the scoring pile. Now there is one thing to note. If you do end the game and you are standing here on Cinderella Castle, then you get to take this, which is worth two stars. So that one is quite a nice one, but you need to be the one who ends the game and is landing on here. So it's a very unique situation since you might be out walking. So regardless, at the end, what you want to do is go ahead and total the cards. So let's just say we have Ariel and Tinkerbell over here. And over here, let's just go say we have Cinderella, Liberty Tree Tavern, and the two from the base. Now, whoever has the most points wins. So in this case, we have three stars versus a good old four stars. So this side would win and they would be declared the winner. Now, one thing to keep in mind is there is a lot of cards. So even though you might say, hey, well, what if there's not really enough characters? It gets a little bit boring. This is a lot different than the original Disney World board game that came out quite a few years ago, where there was only a set number of cards and you would most likely get the repeated ones over and over. This one is quite a big stack and it brings back some fun nostalgia, getting to look at different things, whether it's Buzz, Cosmic Rays, and remembering different memories. So hopefully you enjoy and hopefully the instructions are clear enough. Thanks for watching, I hope you all have a great time, and if you do decide to get to the game, go ahead and enjoy that game for me. Have a good evening everyone, and stay magical.